Hello friends, this is CA Karun Nagpal and in this video we are going to talk about IBBI valuation examination. So I'll give you tips to crack this examination since uh, people are finding this examination difficult and uh, the average attempt uh, to clear this examination is around 7 to 8. So how you can easily crack this examination within a given time. So I'll share the tips to crack this examination with you all. So before that, let's quickly uh, talk about the contents, what we are going to discuss in this video. So I'll talk about the pre-valuation rules framework and what government might do in future because they have drafted the uh, valuation bills. So somehow due to Corona and other factors, uh, the bill is still pending with uh, the finance minister, could not be approved, could not be presented in the parliament. So once that bill come into picture, what will happen? and uh, valuation uh, how many valuers are required in india in times to come as per that bill and then we will talk about eligibility criteria to become a registered valuer under these rules so under section 247 uh, right now they have introduced this registered valuers and uh, later on they will have separate body to govern the valuation professional under the valuation bill so somehow that got deferred right now we are uh, re registering under section 247 of companies act then what is the process who can become the uh, valuer so lot of people lot of chartered accountants company secretaries and cost accountants they are uh, willing to diversify uh, their profession what all new activities they can add to their profession so there are number of emerging areas so one of that uh, is the valuation somehow the growth under this pro profession has been sluggish due to corona and various other factors but i'll guide you how you can crack this examination and become a registered valuer once the bill come into picture you will automatically get uh, converted into the valuer under the new uh, act that is proposed still proposed and pending for uh, parliament's approval so uh, we'll also talk about tips how you can prepare how you can uh, quickly crack this examination which study material uh, to use and what should be the uh, preparation strategy to crack this examination uh, within least possible time so uh, let's first start with the pre-valuation era before the valuation rules under the companies act 2013 came into picture there were no regulator for valuation services so uh, although valuation is required under various statutes banking income tax under the wealth tax act also number of valuers were registered for doing the valuation companies act also requires uh, in case of merger acquisition so there are number of statutes where valuation uh, is required but somehow there is there was no regulator and each of these bodies were doing uh, the registration of valuers as per their requirement so there were no uniform process for valuers and val valuation was largely in self-regulation mode driven by the valuation services and uh, in the past also the institutes have made efforts various institutes have made efforts to have uh, the institutional framework but uh, that that was uh, not possible since they, they themselves cannot develop the statute there was a proposal for draft valuation bill in 2008 also but that could not become an act this time government was pretty proactive to bring that bill to the parliament but uh, due to corona and other things other uh, prioritized items so this this is not yet uh, presented in the parliament then uh, while drafting the insolvency and bankruptcy code uh, while drafting the regulation they felt that the valuation profession is of utmost important without valuation insolvency cannot be done so they utilize section 247 of companies act and they come up with these uh, rules under section 247 of companies act wherein uh, right now oh, for companies act and insolvency and some of the uh, sebi regulations also uh, the registered valuer is the only person who can do the valuation then friends uh, i would not say that uh, the this has emerged very well this profession has emerged but in times to come we have a very bright future because 
if this this bill valuation bill come into picture and become an act it will be very difficult to become a valuer right now they say only a professional with an experience of 3 plus years or 5 in some cases uh, can become the registered valuer just by undergoing the 50 hours of training and uh, clearing the valuation examination somehow this examination has become difficult because the ibbi uh, has have added number of uh, fresh questions and there are practical case studies also which a candidate find difficult to crack so i'll 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 talk about that also how you can easily crack this examination so before that let's talk about the statistics so this is the draft valuer bill 2020 uh, which says that there is requirement of 2 lakh plus valuers in india and right now we only have 4600 approx uh, valuer registered with ibbi so the, the the valuation rule have divided the valuers into three asset class land and building plant and machinery and securities and financial assets they may create further class if, if required for right now uh, the asset closest to these categories will be merged with uh, the existing categories they said that the valuers required in india in times to come would be 2 lakh and if you compare that this number 4600 it's very less so how they have arrived to this 2 lakhs valuer in India they have studied the global scenario so what they have done they have studied valuers currently working in different countries different developed countries of the world so if I talk about the US and Europe we have around 16 valuers per lakh of population England have 69 Australia has 42 valuers per lakh of population so if if we convert these numbers into Indian scenario converting these numbers these ratio a, into Indian population so we in times to come we would be requiring 2 lakh valuers 2 lakh valuers who would be working in India now friends let's talk about the valuation requirement uh, so valuation is required for various purposes this is not the exhaustive list there may be other uh, purpose where valuation is required so i have tried to sum up uh, the statutes wherein the value valuation is required so under the regulatory uh, as as a as a regulatory requirement under rbi fema income tax ab companies act insolvency and bankruptcy code reg uh, valuation is required business restructuring in case of acquisition in case of sale purchase merger fundraising for financial reporting purpose though registered valuer is not required as such but since the the, the registered valuer have, has the expertise for valuation so he would be required for the valuation uh, for the financial reporting purpose also other in other case in some other case in case of litigation in case of family settlement valuation is required so you can see the li list of statutes over banking regulation act Security Contract Regulation Act, Well Tax Act, Income Tax Act, uh, SEBI, Insurance Regulatory, uh, uh, IRDA, FEMA, SARFAC, Prevention of Money Laundering, uh, Limited Liability Partnership Companies Act, Pension Fund Regulatory Development Authority Act, Black Money Act, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code and there are various other statutes where valuation may be required. Now uh, friends. Uh, I understand these these are the traditional areas we have been working upon uh, being a professional whether it's company secretary chartered accountant or uh, cost accountant so we have been doing the audits we have been taking care of indirect taxes direct taxes and a lot of other regulatory compliances now the time has come to change and adopt the new emerging areas there are number of emerging areas you can opt for the environment is changing very fast expectation of regulators is going high risk has gone substantially high and uh, regulatory action has been taken so recently we he heard about changes in the chartered accountant cost accountant company secretary amendment bill and they have uh, changed the disciplinary mechanism there so number of amendments have taken place recently and uh, so we so we would have to build new skills embrace technology and uh, start to live with ambiguity and uh, uncertainty 
so what are the professional areas let me quickly talk about insolvency profession is one of the emerging areas so somehow due to corona again uh, this ha has been deferred to some extent however in future this is a very potential emerging area once the this bankruptcy trustee for an individual or partnership firm came into picture which is yet to be notified under ibc so there will be huge potential in this profession and we would be requiring number of uh, nclts drts and lot of uh, insolvency professional right now there are only a handful of insolvency professional then uh, as we have discussed the valuation professional currently it is working under the registered valuer and valuation rules under companies act and uh, in times to come government has propo already proposed the committee has already proposed to the government uh, for the constitution of niv so uh, since a uh, lot of uh, valuers have already been registered under these rules so government will definitely this time bring in this statute then uh, under the forensic and fraud investigator so uh, this is also one of the merging areas where uh, the forensic auditors are required so fafd course has been conducted by ici and cfp and by acfp big data analytics is also one of the merging areas where a chartered accountant would have to learn all these language to develop the tools so big data management uh, dbms sql python these are the language and the courses you can do disa cisa and uh, the, the, there are a number of certification microsoft azure aws and gcp are some of the tools that are getting pop popularized nowadays since the management of database is becoming challenge for the companies and uh, that involve a huge cost also and they want to substantially reduce their cost so they are switching into cloud cloud platforms and a lot of companies are transforming their uh, database to gcp or aws or um, uh, microsoft azure so we need a professional with a mix of technology and finance fintech we call it as to uh, do those kind of transformations so coming back to the valuation profession again uh, the eligibility criteria as i said the, there are three categories land and building plant and machinery and securities so for land and building we need civil engineers for plant and machinery mechanical engineers and for securities uh cacs cma and uh, pg diploma or a postgraduate in finance with 3 years of experience can enroll with the rvo and then appear for the examination so friends this is a process to become a registered valuer the first step first step is to check the eligibility criteria under the company registered valuer and valuation rules so once you you say that you are eligible then you should approach to the rvo rvo are the frontline regulator which are registered with ibbi who enroll the candidates and train them the rvos are 15 or 16 in numbers let me take you through the ibbi website uh so you can see uh, here the list of rvos registered valuer organization so registered valuer organizations here is a list of uh, registered valuer organization you can approach any of these 16 registered valuer organization and uh, undergo this 50 hours of training you have to complete this 50 hours of trainings and you will get a certificate then thereafter you have to go to ibbi website and enroll for the examination and before that you would have to study you would have to study for 100 to 150 hours and then enroll for examination you can enroll at the ibbi website examination valuation examination and then you can select your category security and financial asset and uh, register uh, and enroll so enrollment will be at nism website you would have to fill in the details and create your account and uh, upload the certificate and your uh, qualification uh, proofs then friends after clearing the examination you will have to register with ibbi for clearing the examination you need at least 60% mark so this is the registration and then you will get the certificate of practice some rvos are providing certificate of practice say ici rvo is giving one day training to have to get this uh, certificate of practice then you become a registered valuer and then you can uh, sign a valuation report then friends registered valuer examination as i said this is an online examination however you have to go to the center to appear in this examination uh, you have to book a slot at the nism center computer based uh, uh, examination with 
multiple choice questions, two hours examination, 100 marks, 80 questions, one mark and 10 question of two mark, negative marking is there, you have to secure 60%, immediately you will get the result, that is the good thing, you do not have to wait and if you pass, you get a certificate, there, there is no uh, material, study material, or mobile phone or uh, books allowed uh, at the center and uh, you can do your calculation using a normal calculator and uh, excel also you can use in case of its unavailability you can use apache open office so for all of these category you can uh, appear the, uh, at the center near you at the nism center you you will get a list of nism center when you create your account at nism website and mandatory 50 hours of training you have to complete before enrolling for this examination uh, you would be requiring the completion 50 hours completion uh, training completion certificate then friends this is the fee fee structure 5000 you need uh, for uh, the rvo membership then training fees varies from 10 to 25000 since uh, online trainings are going on so mm, that is pretty cheap and you can go for that also IBBI examination fees is 1500 plus GST once you clear the examination then you will have to enroll with the RVO as a registered value or member and 10,000 is the membership fees additionally you will have to pay to 5,000 5, to IBBI for that is for 5 years this is the syllabus uh, macroeconomics 3 finance and financial statements 6 marks professional ethics 3 marks general laws judicial uh, pronouncement one marks financial reporting four marks valuation overview 40 marks and case studies 26 marks so the, these are the marks uh, they have allocated under the new uh, syllabus which is applicable from July 2022 and uh, there is slight changes in the number of marks if you look at the marks allocation their objective is that student should focus on the valuation rather than other stuff so for 70 percent of the syllabus constitute the valuation itself so you, we have you have to be very through with the valuation concepts then uh, some of the exam tips so uh, i would suggest you to participate actively in 50 hours tr training develop your understanding growth go to the study material which is with whichever uh, RVO you enroll they provide uh, the study material you should go to the, through the study material carefully and practice practical questions in advance make comfortable uh, yourself comfortable with Excel or Apache open office uh, since it is a freeware so some center do not have Excel so they provide Apache open office practice mock test you can practice mock test at well uh, this website rv mock test online uh, let me quickly show you how you can practice so this is a website rv mock test online and you can practice uh, mock test of your category at this website you can choose and enroll so they are providing uh, a mock test before going to the ibbi center you can practice these mock test uh, at the convenience of your home and uh, it, it that is pretty quick you just have to buy uh, or make the payment and uh, start appearing in the mock test this is similar to uh, IBBI examination so uh, the good thing here is you after after appearing in this examination you get the scorecard so you get the scorecard uh, you get the case study solutions and uh, uh, detailed performance evaluation and it is similar to the IBBI examination so uh, case studies are pretty good uh, at this website coming back to our presentation so during the examination I would suggest you to attempt only those questions where you are sure where you do not know the answer do not do guesswork time is very important so since uh, it is two hours uh, examination do not spend much time on practical question rather first finish all the theory questions and then jump to the practical question case study uh, practice in advance you will not be able to crack the case study in case you do not practice uh, and be careful there is negative marking so I would suggest you to start with the study material whatever you have you can also download the study material from IBBA website RVOs are doing a pretty good job they are providing the study material in case you are close you can practice uh, since this practice is available at the comfort of your home you can use RV mock test online website and practice as much as you can before appearing in the I IBBA examination even if you are not able to crack this examination I would suggest you to appear again and again since the average attempt to crack this examination is 7 or 8 so I would not suggest uh, you to just leave or take a break in between 
just be focused and continue appearing till the time you crack this examination and i would suggest you to focus on the valuation stuff other acts you just have to go through them you should have an understanding of other other uh, acts in the syllabus so just go through them and uh, i believe you would be able to crack the questions that's all friends i have in this video so i would be coming up with some more informative videos uh, till then stay tuned and thank you for watching